Eric Trueheart, and Jonah Vasquez. They came out in reverse order, but that's fine. All right. So uh, let's get started. Testing. Hello. Hello. Well, excellent. Uh, can we all start? Everyone introduce themselves and tell us your life story. Just go around. We in only a circle. have 40 minutes, though. Yeah, so make can it you quick. Reduce it to about six words. Just you, tell us your go. favorite word. What, yep. do you, what do you what do you Too stand slow. for? You right there. What do you what do you stand for? <laughs> you stand for nothing, sir. Oh my god. It's, uh, oh my this god. Is very He's a disappointing. Already this is bad. Yeah. <laughs> so let's let's get into it. Let's get into the into the okay. most important thing. Um, and that is uh, uh, what exactly, Jonan, were you smoking when when Invader Zim came to you, was it a bolt out of the blue? Was it born Athena-like from the head of Zeus? Or was it a lot of work? It was just PCP. Sweet. So basically, you had the idea, you fought the police, and then... Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Do you smoke PCP? Or do you, do you, you eat you, it? You know what, what, by what? the time you take know. it, I think you could smoke it and not care. Someone here has to have, like, there, is someone any, on, on PCP right now? Like, I don't know much about it. I any like making you? jokes about it, but I don't know what you do with it. Were you raising your hand? Are there yeah. any PCP experts here? Do you rub it in your gums? I any law in enforcement that should not be listening to this conversation? Seriously, not a single person here has ever been on PCP. Oh, God, oh, God this is a very I mean, disappointing I mean, I haven't, audience. but... Wait, this... Yeah, you are, did. Are, are you they okay? He's standing up. They're... No, he's just moving. Oh. Oh. Uh, I, oh, I, I, I tell you, I, ha I had prizes for people because we had a question. I thought we were going to have questions. Apparently, there's no questions. Nope. Nope. And Nobody, I was going to give one everyone, of these. Everyone here yeah. knows everything about Invader Zim already. Everyone, yeah. everyone so there's knows everything. Nothing no worth one. talking about. In fact, I think we're done. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Thank you right. for coming. Now, yep. I, I do actually have a, have a more serious question. So, uh, you know, Jenny and I was, I was looking at, and I was. I was doing some research into both of your backgrounds, the, the aforementioned reference to law enforcement. Yeah, don't do that. Uh, yeah, it wasn't good. You won't like I don't think you, you want to see that background check, dude. It's not great. Um, Jonan, you said at one point that some of your, your great influences in animation uh, were Plague Dogs and <laughs> Flight of Dragons. Now, I don't, have, you, have you guys, any of you seen Plague Dogs? No. If I oh, like God. a thing, that means... None of the fans. Give Let me a just shit. tell you, it is you, the happiest. You don't, you do, you, you don't want to talk about things that I like because they, they do oh, no, not no. give a shit. No, this this is going someplace. Very has anyone important. seen Plague Dogs? Anybody? Okay, has anyone one person seen Plague one Dogs person. on PCP? Okay. Why can't you be more like them? Person who's seen it, is it the happiest movie of all time or what? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of depressing. Okay. All right, you get okay. a prize. Okay. Yeah, I, I so, won't say I won't say that Plague Dogs is like one of my favorite movies. It just it left a mark. Right. It left a mark because as a kid, uh, you know, I grew up with all kinds of the, the usual the usual stuff that you know probably yeah. Eric, you know, Plague you Dogs. Just, you just yeah. you, you just get fed stuff and then you find stuff, but it's generally for kids. And then there's these things that uh, they give the appearance of children's entertainment, but, you know, as a kid, you'll Caligula, sit, for example. Yes, like Caligula. Does that make sense to anybody? No, 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 this audience has <laughs> nothing. Okay, you, need to know, this is, you need to know the audience. Pearls before swine. Who here has heard of Pikachu? There you go. Okay. okay. It's there not Pikachu. Not everybody, go. though. Yeah, that's surprising. Only about 40%. You haven't heard of Pikachu? Come on. Clap if you believe in Pikachu. He's the latest thing. All right. Okay, good. I, too, like lightning bolts firing out of my ass. But, but like, I, like, the first time I sat down and I watched Plague Dogs, I thought, you know, oh, this is a cartoon. I like cartoons. I'm a kid. I like cartoons. I'm going to watch this thing. And one of the earliest scenes, if you don't know, uh, Plague Dogs is an animation about uh, these dogs that escape from a medical testing facility. So, you know, happy stuff. Uh, and then very early on, one of the dogs who has escaped finds a hunter, and it looks like, oh, he's, he, he found a friend. Uh, and this hunter is out hunting, and the dog just accidentally uh, sets off the hunter's shotgun, killing the hunter. And, and it, it's, you know, as a kid, you're just sort of like, holy shit, wh what is this? And I love that reaction. I, 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 like, I like the idea of 
anyone finding something and then going, holy shit, what is this? Because when's the last time that you watched something and you felt anything? Right. Anything. Right. Especially, I think, as a, as a kid, when you encounter something that superficially looks like it was made for you, but the truth is it, it wasn't. It was made for adults. It's a very American yeah. uh, approach to animation where it's everything is for kids. Yeah. Everything right. is for kids. And the, like the last person that I want to make happy, I, I love kids, but they don't need any more yeah, shit to make them kids. happy. <laughs> kids are, I watched a kid in the airport and he was, his mom was like having him push her luggage and he was just like, wee, <laughs> like so happy pushing luggage. Like you don't need to make them happy. They're just kids. Old people, they need stuff. Yeah. They need stuff because <laughs> life is goddamn depressing. Did you see uh, Watership Down as a kid? You oh, no. Watership I Down? saw that recently. Oh, I saw I that saw, way more recently. Yeah, I saw that as a kid. And I, I remember, first of all, I remember the ad they would run for it on HBO or whatever it was, where you had the, the who is the, 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 the sort of freaky rabbit? The Fiber. One, like, the visions? Yeah, it was just saying, the field, it's covered in blood. And I was yeah. like, as a kid, like, all right, this could be cool. It was... He was and actually talking about a football game, and that's the weird part. They don't they don't include Did that. You, and I remember the, the the fight at the end between the big rabbit and the, and just General the Voonvort. shreds of yep. flesh hanging off their faces. Freaking as crazy! They were fighting big wig. Ver- Look, so they for those of you, that. they remade it. Yeah, and it years wasn't ago. great. Yeah, it was weird. For those of you playing at home, um, the connection between Watership Down and Plague Dogs is that they're both based on novels by Richard Adams. Uh, I actually read. Watership Down when I was nine years old because I'm a maniac. Uh, and I, I personally loved it when the rabbits were all murdering each other. It was pretty great. Because yeah. it's, cause it's yeah. just a good story. It's like, regardless story. of, like, con- like, the tone, it's just, it's good storytelling and good characters, and it's, it's, it's memorable stuff. Yeah. Should we throw out something about Zim? Never. Well, here's the question about Zim. So, here you are. Um, no, I'm maybe, not here. Coming off of, like, this is the thing that sets you into motion, but the rest of your career doesn't really resemble what comes out of that sort of material. Invader Zim is certainly, it's a, it's a very different tone. So what are you accessing when you get into Zim? I mean, there's just certain stuff that I think is always funny. Like, I like uh, cruelty. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, sarcasm. Like, like Zim. Zim is. I wouldn't. You know, Zim is very much a thing from my head. But it's a thing. It's a bunch. Of, it's a collection of things that I recognize as terrible qualities in people, <laughs> and that's really funny to me. And the hope is that you know an audience would look at that and recognize that it's funny because these people are so horrible, not because being mean is horrible. Uh, or being can mean, be great. Is, being mean is, is like a good thing. It's just, it's funny to recognize that this is awful. Right. You know, it's not a show about like, here's how to feel good. And, uh, you know, it, was, it wasn't You're intended not celebrating for little, little kids. Yeah. Um, I, it's, it's, it's for that, that age where suddenly sarcasm makes sense. Because if you talk to like a little kid and you're being sarcastic, they don't really yep. get it. It's not until they get a little bit older and more sophisticated that they understand like, oh, you're saying a thing that you don't mean. That's why that's funny. Completely. Yeah. I've got nine-year-old twins, one of whom does not recognize sarcasm at all. The other one has weaponized it. Yeah. Like a razor blade, this little bastard. Um, that one so, will kill the other one. Absolutely, he will. Uh, so, Eric, for yes. you, coming into this insane yes. world of Invader Zim, yes. you wrote on the show. Yes. yes. Uh, and then you wrote the comic book series that followed. Yes. So, what were you, for you, personally, right? When we're working on somebody else's material, we're always bringing something of our own into it. What yes. were you bringing into it? Yes is great. We love You know what? That's a great band. I loved it. Which, uh, was it Bruford Wakeman or Hal that you were... Hal. Sweet. Okay. No. Um, you know, I mean, here, here's the thing. That, uh, Invader Zim was my first real job out of, um, in, the, in the animation business out of, out of film school. You do not need to go to film school to work in cartoons. Um, or anything. Yeah, well, in film, it doesn't hurt, but you don't have to. You definitely don't have to. Uh, and I, so I had nothing to frame it against. I just knew that, like, okay, I was familiar with Jonan's work, but only, honestly, I, I read your comic books um, when someone said, you're up for this job, Jonan Vasquez. And I'm like, I, I love comics. And then I, I grabbed an issue of Squee, or a compilation, 
And I was like, okay, Nickelodeon. I don't want to work for fucking Nickelodeon. And we Everybody drove up, and that. I was visiting the Bay Area that weekend. I remember just sitting in like an outside a coffee shop, just starting to read Squee and going like, oh, this could be cool. So uh, part of it was like, I liked Joan and Sensibilities. It's great. And so like, it wasn't like I was writing for Hey Arnold, which I had knew nothing about. It was like, this is, this is funny. Joan and is funny. I love this world that he's created. And it was a little bit of me figuring out but also, there's just a lot of me figuring out, like, oh, what, what, what can we now do that's cool and funny? And I drew on a lot of my old sci-fi fandom from a kid, and also just, like, what can we do that's weird? Like, like walk for your lives. Just, like, what if it's blowing up real slow? What if it's that big Ikea explosion at the end? But it's slow. Not much to hang drama on, obviously. But, um, <laughs> you know, that. Or Zim Eats Waffles was that way, too. Yeah, when Eric came in, I think that y you worked... Uh, so well because his influences weren't animation. He didn't come. He, I don't. I mean, he probably watched cartoons uh, oh, like yeah. every other kid. I, I watch cartoons, but he wasn't Watership coming down. in with you know. He yeah. w it wasn't important that he was a big animation fan. He, he just he knew he knew movies and science fiction and and, Kierkegaard and you and, were you know you read uh, fantasy and mm -hmm. and like that that was important that someone was coming in and had that sort of background to pull from versus uh, what, how can we be like this other cartoon? You know, right. like that I don't, I don't really care about. Not that there aren't other cool, you know, animated things that are worth, you know, plundering. Oh, there aren't. No, we were plundering. We were definitely plundering <laughs> and it was good. Like, I like, I like the, yeah, everyone like, like, can you spot the, uh, the rip-off Evangelion shot in Hamstergeddon? Like, can you spot that? Because it is there. <laughs> yeah, like, that stuff came from the board artists. I feel yes. like the board artists were more, they were more, like, anime. Uh, but they were also a lot of horror, which was great. There was just, everyone was very literate on horror films and just, uh, you know, movies and then the board artists brought in their sort of like animation loves. So there would be, you know, the 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 the, the um, ultra peepy running, looking like, you know, something out of Evangelion, only much crappier. Uh, <laughs> well, in animation, and you're dealing with with board artists. On some shows, the board artists go nuts, and they yeah. practically make the episode. On some shows, they are very tightly controlled. So what was it like on Invader Zim? It was about fifty fifty. Okay. Um, I, you know, they, they, there are certain things that they have to do, and then there's, I, you know, I love when, I like, I like when, I like when not just the board artist, but someone is, you can tell when someone's just doing their job, and they might be doing, an like, an amazing job, and then there's people who are like, oh, I would be doing this whether or not you were paying me, because this is really fucking fun, yeah. and I love that. I like when people would, if there was a joke where someone was having something horrible happen to them, I like when uh, somebody comes up to me, like say I've got a board artist working on a scene, uh, when they're like, so I was thinking like, you know, and, and, then, they, and then they're showing me, and, and I can see it in them as they're pitching it to me, how enthusiastic they are about the best way to make someone suffer. And I love that. <laughs> and is that how you made yeah. them suffer, by allowing them to pitch you and feel yeah. great about it and then telling them no? Well, I mean, bo being a board artist is one of the Miserable. Hardest, most miserable. Yeah. I mean, hopefully not miserable, but it is brutal. Yeah. It is brutal. So much of that is, like, if you're not enthusiastic about what you're doing and you still have to do it, that's obviously much worse. And it's so much work. There's so much work that uh, a lot of the heavy lifting is now put almost entirely on the board artist. You know, there used to be a time where there was a lot of stuff that was handled more in-house before you send it overseas, but now you have to send basically as much of a blueprint as possible. Oh, yeah. So all of that heavy lifting after boards is done overseas. Yep. Uh, so, you know, the board artists are, they're the actors, they're the editors in a lot of ways, uh, and it's just so much. Yeah. It's not like drawing a comic, because I can kind of board, but I would never trust myself to do something that, like, there are people that, like, this is what they do and they're really good at it. And it's it's a lot of a lot of work. I yeah. don't and I will it. I will say this like to, to your to your question about like some shows board artists go nuts, others they're tightly reined in. Like like there are some shows in production wise that are very board artists. The board artist basically 
write the story. They write the dialogue, and the SpongeBob is that way. They're handed like a one-page outline, this is what the story is, and it's up to them to figure out how the scenes go, how all that stuff sort of goes. Everything else is like script-driven, where it's like, here's the script, make it work, asshole. And um, that's, that's a technical term. Yeah, um, and w it was very cool being on Zim because, um, now normally in so many shows, and I don't know why this is, they will sequester the artists from the writers. They will put them as far away from each other as possible maybe to keep them from murdering each other. But that is a huge mistake, because on Zim, the writers and the artists were basically in offices next door to each other. So if I wrote something and like, you know, Chris Graham and didn't get it, they could walk down the office, down the hall, and look at me and just say, what the, what does this mean? And, and there were so many times that I would be there at like three in the morning, and the board artists would be there at three in the morning, and you know, we would just start talking, and I, I got to learn so much about their craft. And also, I got to a point, and I think everybody answered that I would write something and be like, oh, I know Chris is gonna go nuts with this. Like, I was writing things that I knew they would, or hoped, that they would love doing because we were doing stuff on the show that you couldn't do anywhere else and so many of them were like, oh my God, I never thought I'd do a pig chase scene or something, you know, they got to pay homage to so many of the things that they loved that you can't do. On <laughs> was that a dream of yours? When you say can't do, yeah. why can't you do it? Because the, the scripts don't, the scripts aren't like that, I mean. You've seen Hey Arnold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's no stealing organs and then running through dark hallways. You Deleted know, scenes. But, uh, hey Arnold. You know, I, I mean, mean, no sass on Hey Arnold. It's a fine yeah, show. By the way, yeah, no sass. I mean, look, if Hey Arnold could steal organs, they would. We know this is true. And you don't know that he doesn't. It's just, it's just a different kind of show. No, it happens off screen. In fact, that's the backstory to Hey Arnold <laughs> that's that right. you never know. What do you think he eats? Uh, so, Eric. Can you think of like a, a great example of a time when the when the artist took something that you had written and just plussed it up beyond anything you you could have conceived? Well, I'll, I'll pull the I'll pull the pig story. Okay. Um, and actually, there's another one mm, in um, pork. Yeah, there's another one in uh, 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 Walk for Your Life. But I'll pull the pig story, which is just that I just wrote. You know, okay, you know, the, the hover thing transforms to a pig, and they chase. You know, Gur get on Gur ride the pig, which I did write, and then they chase off through the park. And that was a case where the board artist just turned that very simple idea into something. And I don't know how much input you had on that, Jonan, but... Five. Yeah, he had five <laughs> input. And, like, you know, passing the bus and the way you see all the faces of all the kids on the bus as it goes by and all that sort of stuff, you know. And, in, like, in Walk for Your Lives, they put the entire wheelchair Mac and Me scene in there, um, <laughs> which we... I did not write that. I mean, I did write the Rube Goldberg uh, thing, but... Yeah, Chris Graham, there was a lot of Mac and Me fans on, on Zoom. <laughs> yeah. I'm not joking. That's amazing. No, I they love loved Mac. I mean, ironically, obviously, but yeah, they when that came out on DVD, when we were there, every board artist bought it. You guys know what Mac and Me is. It's not a pasta for children. It's okay. one of the best cool. things ever yeah. made. The only thing better than Mac and Me is Nuki. If anyone... Do we have any Nuki fans here? <laughs> We did it all for the noogie. Woo. Oh wait, are you are you lo are you lying? No. Okay, sweet, you're cool. <laughs> you get a prize. I totally get a prize. Hey, so Jonan, uh, what is the best idea that Eric ever pitched you? No, no, don't ask him that. Uh, or tell me the worst that's, that's, that you said no that's, to. That's that's yeah. that's too hard to like narrow down. It's just when ideas like bad bad rubber piggy popped up, I was just like, no, this is the right guy. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's just it's the it's an affirmation. It's there. There's you can tell you can tell when some like the 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 fun on Zim was, you know, we all came from we all had our influences, and I think we all had a you know we 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 liked smart things, and then doing our version of those things as stupidly as possible. <laughs> right. So you know, bad bad rubber piggy comes from. You know, just being steeped in science fiction, and I could tell, oh, this guy knows his stuff. But there's that freedom of not having to, you don't have to explain anything. It's like Doctor Who, you right. know? Yeah. They're like, ah, we gotta do this, and you're just like, what? None of that, none of that <laughs> makes any sense, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. Like, it's incredibly fun to not even really care about it's like is this all in the temporal, same show yeah like yeah. like time travel paradoxes or it's just no this is stupid and we hope people recognize how stupid this is um 
Apparently they, they did do. some of that in the comic, too, of just like, nope, that's how time travel works. Everything's fixed now. Yeah. And we would just <laughs> shine a light on it, and that would be that. And but, but, like, Bad Bad Rubber Piggy was one of the first ideas that I was like, oh, no. Like, it's, it's good that Eric's here because it's incredibly hard for me to find writers. I mean, I, anyone who's in a well, position... Well, you can find them, but, you know. Well, you can find them, but, like, imagine, imagine you, you have an idea... It's one of the hardest things, and it's always such a relief to find like that core group of people who help you make a thing, uh, but you have this idea, and then you have to start thinking about, because it's all in your head, and then you have to find the living embodiments of the voices of, of these things that are in your head, and then the people who know how to write the dialogue and the scenarios for these things that are strictly in your head. And we had a good group of people, but I feel like, you know, Eric was, like if I had disappeared yeah. and someone had to take over. You don't know and that how was close the plan. that came to happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I talked to Eric Coleman. You have no idea how close that was to happening. No, I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, Eric Coleman. So, yeah, like... Uh, no one specific idea, just more the idea that, like, oh, no, this guy is coming up with, like, really stupid stuff. It, but it's smart stupid. It's smartly executed stupidity, and that's one of my That sounds things. like a description of my marriage. That's, that's crazy. I'm, we were inspired by your marriage. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And that's it. I mean, like, like, one of our favorite humorous stuff is, like, just stupid stuff done by smart people. Like, you know, we grew up, Monty Python's Flying Circus was a right. big thing. And that was just, like, this is incredibly stupid stuff being done by some very smart people. And you can just tell. And it's just how... Th there's almost, like, this, this uh, I don't even know, like, this platonic... Uh, ideal of, of stupid that like runs th fourth dimensionally through the universe you that know, you can you tap <laughs> into and you know when you've hit that stupid vein. You it's know great. what it is for me? There's something just so beautifully wasteful yes. about using your life and your intelligence to make something so dumb. <laughs> and I love it. I genuinely yeah. think it's beautiful. Yeah, it's almost Dadaist in a way, but it is just like, I can't believe we did this. This and is so pointless in yeah. so many ways, and yet thousands and thousands of dollars went into making it happen. And, and like 50 people like it, you know? Yeah. Like, that's cool. Yeah. And that's fine, and they're right. all uh, All here. of the fans of are, here are here right now. That's Both of you. Yeah. And that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So, Eric, when you were doing the comic book, I mean, I was yes. going to say, it, you know, maybe you had more freedom, but it sounds like Nickelodeon let you guys do anything you wanted, but then you go to the comic. They did and not care. <laughs> they so did not care. What, that no one they from Nickelodeon was watching them. the comic. They had some person, and there was some very low-level executive person whose job was to look at, look at the comics, and that person didn't care. They weren't paid enough to care. They were clearly bitter about their job and their life and probably where they lived, and, and that they'd ended up overseeing the comic book to a long-canceled TV series, so they were like, eh, yeah, okay, whatever. And that was, that was everything. We had to run stuff by Nickelodeon and say, could you not have the scene where he, like, you know, I don't know, like, chops that guy's head off with a, with a, with a, with a, with a moose penis? You know, and we're like, oh, okay, Did you ask sure. him to pitch out different things to do Those with the moose penis? sharp at all. No. <laughs> no, they're not. That's a lot of work. You know, but a walrus has a, never mind. Um, so, yeah, they Cover your care. ears, kids. They didn't yeah. care. They really did not care. Uh, they let us do whatever we wanted. And I, I saw it as a chance to, it was, first of all, it's fun to just revisit that world and those characters and that sort of stuff. And also it's fun to like, I had some ideas left over uh, from the show that we never got to do. And I'm like, okay, now I get a chance to do them. And now I'm gonna shamelessly promote myself. But uh, at my booth, I've got scripts for the Lost episodes that got turned into comics. And uh, I even wrote a book about writing the scripts, which was going to be a prize, but there's no questions. So There will be. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe the Nuki guy gets one. Yeah. But um, <laughs> you're welcome. It's going to be hard to top Nuki, fam. It is going to be hard to top. Nuki, at the end of this, please walk up here. I will, I will give you a prize. Uh, but Nuki, yeah. Nuki is somehow more disgusting than Mac. Somehow he's grosser and... Uh, well, anyhow, don't get don't no. get me started Suddenly on we're, Nuki. We're digressing I, could, Nuki. I could talk about Nuki for days. So could Limp Biscuit. Uh, so, <laughs> Eric, I have a question I've been burning to ask you. Okay. Um, you say 
in your bio. The answer is no. Well, I don't know, man. You make a big point of saying that uh, you would like to uh, to scream um, Mandy by Barry Manilow in Esperanto, and I was wondering if you could do that for us now. Where where did I write that? On your bio, sir. Which bio? He doesn't read on his your bio. website, sir. Oh, really? Yes. Really? Are you saying you lied on your bio? No, on I'm your saying I forget half of what I write about oh. myself. Um, oh. Who cares? The answer to your question, <laughs> who cares about me? Um, I don't. I see me every day. I'm used to it. Um, no, the answer is I will not because I say I hope to do that someday. And who are you if you don't have hope? Wow. That's very deep. So if I do that, my hope is gone. I dig that. I've got nothing to live for, but I appreciate, I do appreciate uh, you bringing it up uh, and reminding me of why I keep going day after day. So, thank you. So, I'm going to ask you guys one more question, then I'm going to have you guys line up at the uh, microphone if you've got questions that you want to ask. But my question is this. Of all the characters on Invader Zim, which one is your favorite and why is it Gur? I like all of them. I think they're all brilliant and the best things ever created. Of course. Okay. You can't <laughs> no. choose between your children. By the way, I can totally choose between my no, children. No, I, I, I really, I'm a big fan of Poonchi. Okay. I like Poonchi too. Yeah, everyone loves Poonchi. Everyone loves Poonchi. You know what I like too? Scooge. Remember Scooge? Oh, he's actually really, he's a nice guy. Yeah, Scooge is a good guy. He's just a nice guy. I know, he'll help. There's not a lot of nice guys in the show, and, and Scooge is just like a nice person. Yeah, Scooge would drive you to the airport. There's like <laughs> two, I'm trying to think of like decent, just relatively all around good people in the show, and there's like Scooge and Clembrain. Like, they're just, yeah. he's just like a nice, goofy, big thing. Yeah, just he doesn't understand boundaries. Yeah, but you know he's. He but he's not. Very but he's not. Well. He's not like. He's not like a a cruel. No. Like he's. He's really. He doesn't belong in that show. He, no. Are you gonna go back and edit him out of the movie? Yes. Good. Outstanding. Yeah. No, I don't, and I don't know. I don't have a favorite. Although I mean, the easiest to write for is Dib, because mm -hmm. Dib has the closest thing to like a palette of actual human emotions. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, because everybody else is very fixated on one sort of area of, of, of being, which is, by the way, it's so great in, in Forpus that Zim basically just falls into a pit of despair because we'd never seen that before. And nachos. Yeah, and nachos. And he, I, it wouldn't surprise me if he'd been drinking, you know, when you come in there. There is no drinking in Urkin, but, you know, it's, he's got that attitude. That's how Richard did the voice for that bit. Yeah. He just did a drunk Zim. And it was great. Was he actually drunk? During the recording session, he always session. is. Yeah, oh, he fantastic. always is. Okay. Do you know that? Do you know he's a part-time airline pilot, and he only does that drunk too? We have to. Wow, we have to. Crazy. We have to sauce him as long up as he lands. Every, okay. Yeah. 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 So far, he has. But um, by the way, speaking of drinking, like, how drunk did you guys get when uh, Netflix said, "Hey, you want to do, you know, uh, an Invader Zim movie?" That must have been exciting as hell. Or were you intimidated and afraid? Well, that that was Jonan. You should ask him. Yeah. I was drinking anyway. Um, yeah, of course, because it is spare. Yeah. It was fine. <laughs> it was fine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, there was no, I, I, I'm trying to think of the last time where I, like, celebrated. Uh, <laughs> Anything. <laughs> I, I'm trying to remember what happiness was like. It, it, uh, when no, was the it, last time you felt joy? <laughs> uh, I liked when the show got canceled. Um, <laughs> I, I did. I did. I mean, just imagine, imagine you're like, you go to work every day and you're like fighting and you're just trying to, you have to justify, you're just, it was just, it was just meetings. It was just, it wasn't fun at that point. It was just meetings and you, I didn't have time to really sit around and draw or, or really kind of, it was just, there was this feeling of the show is not, it's not thriving, what can we do to fix it? I'm like, there's no fixing it. You know I'm in Blade Runner? When, um, when Roy Batty goes up to Tyrell and he's like, I need, you, I need more life. You know, it's like, I'm broken. You, it's like, I'm, I'm dying and, and I want more life. And Tyrell's like, we made you as best as we could. And I, you know, and I feel like, I feel like they were, you know, it's not their thing. They, you know, it, it was a show on their network, so they're like, "How can we make this successful for so that you know we have a show that's not falling, you know, into shadow?" Uh, and I'm like, "No, let it, it. It's it's what it is. 
Like, I, we can't fix it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make the characters like nicer or more. Like, like they're horrible people, and uh, and people hate it. Let it, let it, <laughs> let it die. Yeah. Let, like, like let us crash this thing in a brilliant, brilliant like our Get way. Get a drunk pilot, and, and yeah, and then like much like Roy Batty did, they squeezed your eyeballs out. The, yeah. Yeah. They crushed. Well, no, which no. usually costs extra. Or did he crush his? Did they crush your skull? I, I don't remember. No, you know what? No, okay. He, okay, no. In 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 this in this, I guess we are Roy Batty. And, oh, we're Roy and Batty. We're, and, and Tyrell's like, you know, we can uh, we can fix you, and 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 okay. we're and we're like, just let us die. <laughs> <laughs> which uh, is which is the opposite. I I will say this too. That's not exactly how it went. Oh, oh, no, I don't remember. Anyway, it'll come to me after this panel, and you'll never know what I was uh, going to say. It wasn't that important. So, like, getting the show was very cool, but. By the time they canceled it, at like the the general vibe was very stressful, and it was a lot of it was just a lot of you know arguments and and, and meetings. So that when they canceled, they're like the show is canceled, and I was just like, oh you no, have time again. <laughs> oh no, like like I knew it was a horrible thing because you've got a crew, you've got people who who need jobs, and they you know they want they don't want to be on a show that's going to get canceled. But in my Heart, <laughs> your very, selfish very little heart. Little, yes, <laughs> yeah. yes. Because oh, it's it's just and and I and I and I uh, you know it's uh, so when the when the movie became a thing, I really resisted that for a, a while, and they were thinking series and then mini series, and I was like I was like oh, maybe, and then I was like what about a mini series? So it was going to be like six episodes, and then I was like what about a movie? And then that's why the movie happened. So it wasn't like a, a moment of like a victory. Um, Suddenly, you saw the vast, terrible climb up the mountain open up in front of no, you, it was and a, there was, it was fire really... and like angry goats with knives and for, just <laughs> everything on the way up. For the most part, it was Very a really it was a really positive experience. It was a completely different experience from working on the series. Uh, we had a lot of support for the most part. And uh, it was it was it was it was really nice, but yeah. I wouldn't say in terms of like emotional highs, getting canceled was like it's hard to beat that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I, I will I remember now. So they were Nickelodeon was constantly telling us how well, you're not getting the ratings, we're not getting the ratings, and we we're like, well, college students are watching us. Like we know this, we know that college <laughs> students love us. We've heard from people, and they said, well, two things: one, college students don't have Nielsen boxes, so we can't track their ratings. Two. We're only selling things like breakfast cereal and fruit roll-ups on this network, so we can't go to the sponsors and say, yeah, but college students are watching, because they only want to know the 6 to 11-year-olds who are watching it. So we knew there was a fan base out there, but also like Nickelodeon didn't, like, didn't care about those people. It was just, we need kids. I mean, it, it, Nick is kids. Yeah. We need kids. That's so crazy to me. We it's must powered eat them. by children. It's like yes. they, they knew what it was when they bought it. We it need them to power our engines. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. And they're good eating. Remember like in the Matrix where all the people are hooked up to the machines? It's, yeah. they, have, they have a room where it's just kids and there's just tubes. Yeah. yeah. God, it makes it so much easier to raise them that way because they don't talk back. You know, they do their homework because they don't have any. They just sit there getting their brain sucked out. It's pretty great. I love that. I feel bad for your kids. Is. Oh, God, you should. Um, is there anybody in the audience you would like to ask? Yes, sir. You may rise and ask your oh, question. people have been lining up. And, all right. Oh, here mic. comes the we line. Have seven minutes on the clock. So. Yeah, so go. You will be judged. Go. Uh, just real quick. So what was the initial pitch like? How did something this unique get approved? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I can tell you that the pitch probably wasn't for what the ult the end result was. I think the pitch was maybe a little friendlier, yeah. uh, a little bit more in line with what you would expect on Nickelodeon, and then they fell for it. And then we got the show, and then we were just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Like, oh, what, what have we made? Uh, <laughs> it was, it was a lot, you know, it was still, uh, the joke was that Zim was an alien and clearly, obviously, an alien, and this little boy recognized it, and they were, you know, they were just going to be rivals for the whole show. Really basic kind of stuff. I feel like the real attitude of it didn't pop up until we had gotten the green light for the series, because even the pilot was very silly, much more, I think, childish. Um, it looked darker, though, I think, in it some was, places. Well, it was muddier. The, <laughs> the, uh, the, the palette was yeah. muddier. Um, 
And the, I think the director on that had come from Ren and Stimpy, so it really looked a lot like Ren and Stimpy. Uh, the look of it was different. Uh, it wasn't until the series. I feel like pretty early on in the series, the show was like, okay, that's the show. And I think that Nickelodeon didn't really realize what they had produced sure, a squirrel and until crack a few cocaine. episodes yeah. in. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then we just rode that as long as we could until, <laughs> you know, it just caught fire. Yeah, thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hi. How did you guys come up with, like, some of the songs, like the Doom song that Gurr sings and stuff like that? Uh, almost everything that Gurr sang was just me saying, just do this. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, like peace is nice. I was just in the shower, and I was singing that. Um, uh, his most of the stuff that Gur sings is just so it's fast and tiny. It a lot of it is just do 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 do. Or uh, it again. I, I guess I keep thinking about Florpus, but like, it's just funny singing stupid little songs. Like when he's walking and he's just all just fat with pudding. <laughs> and it's just, those just, it's just, I, I just go, just, just go, you know, just, do, and, and, and like, those are all like specifically timed, because I'm like, and then, and it was, because then we're going to slam the door. Cause like, I, that stuff's already in my head. Um, and Ricky sings like that anyway. And Ricky, you know, I, I mean, Gur is a kind of a combination of me and also knowing what Ricky already does. Mm -hmm. So, uh. It's it, none of it. it it's funny because like Gur is like maybe the least random character in my head because it's like no, just just do this. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yes, man. All right. So how did Sizzlor get his scar? What happened to him? Why is he so sad? Oh, Sizzlor. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a it's a cool scar. <laughs> He got it in a, in, a, in a war somewhere. I don't know. We, 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 he did. We, he was a soldier. We didn't think that far. We didn't think that far in, into it. Yeah, it just we, looks cool. We didn't do an entire like dramaturgical uh, you know, biography of Sizzlor. Before you know what, he, I, what I imagine, though? I imagine that like he was frying something up, and he just got like some grease hit him in the face. Oh, it happened to me, too. It's okay. All right. That stuff's okay. dangerous. Can I imagine it was a war? Because I really, that, I, I like that. You need to use Maybe one of those uh, little... Uh, the little nets that you put over, like the bacon and stuff, to keep the the grease from <laughs> yeah splattering. It in will your face. burn. It yeah. will burn. <laughs> so be careful. Safety tips take, for if you. If you take anything away today, yeah, please put a safety Use a net over your bacon. Use a grease guard when you're frying up foods. For the love of God, that we stuff beseech you for bacon. the love of God. Next, yes, ma'am. What's the darkest scene in the show that you love the most? Darkest scene that we love the most. I, Dark Harvest is the darkest stuff, I think. Well, visually, that's scary, straight up scary, but I don't know. I mean, it, yeah, there's some intense stuff in that. It's just like questions like that to me are, are weird because I don't think of any of it as all that dark. <laughs> it, it's <laughs> like, it's just funny to me, but I, I, I don't know. I, like, that's a question for people who aren't me. What, what, what are some of the darkest scenes? What's some, what, do we have someone who thinks that they, like what, have, any, have you seen Zim? <laughs> I keep picking on you. Because you're in front. Uh, what's, what do you think is the darkest thing in the show? Uh, probably showing himself through a camera door. Uh, yep, see? see? <laughs> and and, and you, question asker, what, what's your darkest thing? Yeah, what do you think? When, on the uh, show. Zim, um, when Zim, uh, Places the kids' eyeballs with a different set and makes <laughs> yeah. him a lot of people. As him, and then wasn't he supposed to die at the end of the episode? Yeah, he was supposed to. Well, he falls off of a power line and explodes or something. <laughs> Pretty dark. See, like I, th I would think that was dark if he just took his eyes, because and then leaves him. Just like imagine that episode ending. P picture, <laughs> picture, picture. Okay, picture if the ending was just like pitch blackness, and you hear like footsteps and then stepping into like a bit of gloom so you can see is is uh keith and he's just doing this stumbling around eye sockets empty credits <laughs> like that to me to me that's dark and it's funny but like having having your eyes taken and then immediately replaced with 
robot eyes. Like that. That's like that. Like I want that. Uh, that's like like give me robot eyes. That's not dark to me in any way. I kind of wish that you guys were able to do that. Oh, I would have <laughs> loved to have ended that. I with, would love to see it. That would have been so cool. Wouldn't it have? That would have been a, I think the show would have been a bigger hit with the kids. Oh, totally. The kids, <laughs> kids uh, love that. That's why I loved Man with the X-Ray Eyes when I was five years old. Um, we have time for one more question, but I'll take two if they're quick. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Have you ever considered making an animated series about Johnny, or is that something you'd ever want to do? I, yeah, I would love to. It's just, it's one of those things that I haven't really gone all that seriously in looking into, just because it would be a huge pain um, to try and get, because I think it'd be expensive, mm. and to find that kind of money for something that uh, I would really love to be. Oh, what the hell? We've never had, had an alarm before. Yeah. Everybody, People. run! Hold on, I want to get her. Yeah, question. I know, right? It's like with the kid, with the child, with the child. What you can is flash happening? all you want. We're not leaving. That's right. There's a child here. Damn you! Okay, go ahead. Sorry about saying the D word. What, what is your favorite? Who's your favorite character? Because mine is Gur. It's Gur. Mine is too. Mine is also yeah, Gur absolutely. because you know why? Gur is awesome. You have great taste. In you fact, you are perfect. You win a prize. <laughs> yeah, you do. You win a Zimmy Twaffle script. So everyone, thank you for coming out for the panel. Wondering.